Aquala. Welcome to Expat Life Ghana. I'm Tony. This is my wife, Aya. We're documenting our move from Texas to Ghana as we go beyond the return. And if you are planning your first trip to Ghana, or if you've already been here, maybe you've already moved here, you may be wondering what sites you'll want to see. So in this video, we're filling you in on the 20 best places to visit here in Ghana. All right, so let's get this video started. So we grouped the places on our list kind of by type because, well, I'm an orderly type of lady. Yes, you are. And I let her be all type A on things. Yes, type A, type A, type A. The groups that we're going to break down are going to be adventure, nature, historical, and all around must-dos or must-sees. With that, we're going to start with an adventure. Mm. First up, the canopy walk at the Rainforest Reserve at Kakum National Park. Um, it totally lets you tap into the adventurous side of yourself and yes. you get to enjoy like a rainforest type surrounding around you. I've been traveling in the States before and really you don't have a lot of places where you can tap into a rainforest feeling like this. So it's awesome that you can do that here. You also get to explore endangered wildlife. The park is about three and a half hours from Accra International Airport and it's worth the drive. Absolutely. We're kind of clocking all of our locations based on Accra um, International Airport because that's kind of the center right. of... We're using that as the hub. It is. All right. So number two takes us into the northern region, into Mole National Park. If you are staying in Greater Accra, then you'll either take a bus and it's like... 15 hours or so. Yeah, it's a little, long, long ride. You might just want to go for the 40 minute uh, plane ride. Yes, otherwise you can fly in Tamale to, into Tamale Airport and then drive from there. Yes, Mole offers you a safari-like experience with regional wildlife, including elephants, um, roan antelope, and rare birds. Yeah, I think people think that they're gonna come to Africa and like here in Ghana, there'll be lions, there'll be lions and zebras and, just yeah, roaming, roaming around. around. No, no, no. Not the case. <laughs> um, even the wildlife that's at Mole is not maybe. It's not everything uh, you think of, like. Yeah, and some of the animals were imported, so they're not all all what you area. think of yeah. when you think of African safari. Yeah. But it's good. Yeah, the park is just under five thousand square kilometers, so wow. there is a lot to explore. <laughs> there is. Just remember, dry season is actually a better time to visit because the animals congregate around the watering holes. So if you're planning your trip, keep that in mind. Number three is an adventure for some, but I'm going to keep my behind at home for this one. <laughs> oh, yep, not everybody will want to stop at the Paga Crocodile Pond. Um, but if you've ever wanted to post a picture up close and personal with something that can kill an antelope, well then more power to you. Absolutely, you're crazy. <laughs> uh, it is located in the uh, northern region yeah. as well. In fact, it's almost in Burkina Faso. Yeah, it's far up yeah. there. But if you're into that kind of thing, it's worth checking out. I'll be at the house. Yeah, I'm not going. <laughs> Maybe this adventure will be more your speed. How about Lake Volta at number four? Oh, yes. Oh. Please. Uh, lake Volta is the world's largest man-made lake. I didn't even know it was the world's largest world's one. Largest. That's crazy. I've been there too. It's beautiful. Yeah. Um, it covers uh, nearly 4% of Ghana. Oh, wow. So that's, that's really big. big. <laughs> <laughs> the Volta region is beautiful, and it's located about two and a half hours from um, the Accra airport. So it's yes. pretty close. Yes, you can fish, swim, boat, and ski. Uh, basically, all of the water activities uh, yeah. you could possibly dream of and in a beautiful setting. It is. It is so pretty. And there's so much to do in the area surrounding the lake. Mm -hmm. So the lake is definitely a draw on all the water sports, but there's just an endless amount of natural beauty and local um, places to interact. With. The possibilities are just endless. So Volta region, Volta Lake for sure. Okay. Okay, since we're talking about nature. Let's talk about some of the other natural beauties here in Ghana people should visit. Mm. Number five on the list are the waterfalls. Oh, so I love the waterfalls. Pretty. Oh, and I have to tell you, it's hard to limit just to one to put mm. on the list. So because there's more than one here in Ghana that are worth visiting. They are beautiful. And if you're in that region, it's a must see. If you're based in the greater Accra area, then the Bodhi Falls may be easier. They're only two to three hours away from uh, the Aquai Airport, depending on traffic. 
You really liked going to yeah, the water the falls. The water falls was very nice. Yeah, that's definitely. You'll love the serenity and the beauty at this natural spot. And if you have the time, you should definitely spend a little bit of it there. Hi, I'm Leo. Subscribe right now. All right, so if you are a nature lover, then the Nature Preserve at Shy Hills is a great place to visit at well, as well, and that's at number six. Yes, just two hours from the Accra Airport, the Nature Preserve is an adventure nature crossover. If you want the full experience, then you'll want to hike, so bring those sensible shoes and grab <laughs> your camera. There's so much natural beauty here. It's a great place to visit. Um, yeah. I remember Luke was just amazed Luke by it. the rock climbing and the views. Yeah, I mean, like straight up climbing there. up boulders and yes. things like that. And but the, the view. granite, the granite oh. uh, the mountains were great. Yeah, the boys really, uh, the guys, you took two yeah, boys. The, the boys, boys really love doing it. So um, next up is the Aburi Botanical Gardens. They opened up in 1890. It is 160 right. acres of exploration waiting just for you, which includes gigantic trees and trails. So and when she says gigantic trees, <laughs> these things are about, wow, at least 20 feet yeah, wide. Yeah, they, they are just really big. Crazy. It's just an hour uh, from the Accra Airport and up in the mountains where the views are amazing and the weather is just a little bit cooler. I love it. Even if you don't want to walk all around the garden, which is totally fine, the drive there is beautiful and it's worth making time just to drive up to the area, have a little lunch, and come on back into Accra. Makes the perfect day trip. The views are spectacular. That they are. <laughs> They're spectacular. Lake Bosom Tree, outside Kumasi, the only natural lake in Ghana and made by meteorite over a million years ago. I was astonished by that when I was looking. I was like, wow, this is a crazy backstory. A million, a million years, ago, years ago. The Ashanti actually consider this a sacred lake. And according to traditional beliefs, the souls of the dead come here to bid farewell to Mother Earth. Interesting. It is. It's super interesting to me. <laughs> Sections of the lakes are surrounded by rainforest, so it's a great place to explore and discover some of the cultural lore of the Ashanti. Yes, yeah, so if you have a shanty in you, mm -hmm. <laughs> you may want to make a trip. <laughs> All right, so here we are with number nine. Ghana is more than just a beautiful place to visit. There are some historical sites that are absolutely must-see, especially if you really want to appreciate the long history of Ghana. First up in the historical sites is the Larbanga Mosque. It is the first mosque in Ghana and is well known as the Mecca of the West. Oh, West Africa, I yeah. should say. It's crazy looking, though. Like, when you look at it, you're like, well, your well, eyes. It, yeah. It's amazing what people were able to build so long ago mm -hmm. to me. It's just... It was founded in uh, 1421, so the historical longevity of the site is impressive. Yeah, and it's located in the nor northern region. So when you visit Tamale and Mole National Park and the Paga Crocodile Park or Pond, you want to add this mosque to your itinerary and make sure you make that stop. All right, so number 10 is also a part of the historical list. Maya Angelou said, I have great respect for the past. If you don't know where you come from, you don't know where you're going. And I have to tell you, I there's a lot to see here, right? I got, yeah, I gotta go with that one. <laughs> That's a good one. There is a lot of historical significance in these sites as part of understanding the journey of the diasporans and also of understanding Ghana's long history. Number 10 are the castles in Elmina and Cape Coast. Uh, we'll start with the Elmina Castle. It was erected in 1482 and still over 500 years later is in great condition and interesting way to step into the past. Yeah, I have to tell you that, you know, all of these castles were kind of initially part of the gold trade, um, but later they became a major artery in the transatlantic slave trade. So the experience of walking through these places with a knowledgeable guide... Which they have on site. ...can be soul-changing, no joke. Yeah, if you go into that castle and you come out the same way, you went in, you're not human. Yes, <laughs> it's true. Oh my God, it's totally true. Yes. And um, there's a lot to see and to do on the Cape Coast. It's about uh, three and a half hours from the Accra Airport. Um, I totally would suggest uh, taking a city tour and experiencing the uh, fishing port and the market there. 
Absolutely. Both of those are a great experience. I love, like, there's so much to see in the fishing community that you could really spend a whole afternoon doing. Don't go on Tuesdays. They are shut down on Tuesdays. No fishing on no Tuesdays. No fishing on Tuesdays. Completely. All right. Um, so this is actually a place we are including in our tour itinerary, um, both the Elmina Castle and the Cape Coast Tour. Absolutely. Uh, this was supposed to be an announcement for our live next week. <laughs> but the boat is out of the dock now. <laughs> um, there's been so many people asking for us to help them plan their visits to Ghana. We decided to take all of the worry and fuss out of the process. Absolutely. We're just launching our vacation packages. So if you are interested in seeing what is available, check out the tours tab on the expatlifeghana.com page. That's www.expatlifeghana.com, or the link is below. And for all you ladies who have been DMing my husband about a single girl's trip, <laughs> <laughs> um, the details are also coming available about that, too. So start packing. Your trip is coming. Absolutely. As a special reminder, we go live the last Friday of every month to talk about all things Ghana, answer your press pressing questions, and just laugh and have a good time. <laughs> yeah, so be sure to join us. Hit the subscribe button now and then also hit the notification bell so that you know exactly when we go live. All right. Um, back to the list. Number 11 are the forts of Ghana. Yes. There are several, but we didn't want to list them uh, all separately. Yeah, that would be kind of a lot because there's... Yeah, there's, there's quite a, a few, <laughs> but there are two notable ones. That's Fort Amsterdam, which is about two and a half hours west of Accra Airport on the way to Cape Coast, or Fort Metalcross, which is near Takarati and is about six hours from the Accra Airport. Both of these forts were part of the gold trade here in the 1600s. It's amazing how a site so old can be in such great condition and really let you transport yourself to a different time and mental space. For real, I have bought some furniture that I put together that didn't last a year. And these guys I, built a fort with the tools they had like 500 years ago and the things standing. are still standing. Uh, anyway, something to think about as you're taking the tour. Mm -hmm. Number 12 is the lighthouse at Jamestown. It was originally built in the 1800s, but it was completely renovated in the 1930s. And it stands as an iconic symbol along the coastline of, of Ghana. So you definitely have to check that out. Absolutely. If you're there, you'll also want to visit the historical landmark at Fort James. Right. It's just like right, right, right there, right down. next door. <laughs> you can walk. Yes. Um, it was a trading post and former prison. Ghana's first president, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, was imprisoned there during the colonial era. Yeah. When you see the inside of this place and you think of... Uh, Anyway, definitely a historical site worth seeing. It's currently a museum, and the place really makes you think about how Ghana has made a move towards independence over the last hundred years. Exactly. Number 13 has to be the Kwame Nkrumah Memorial Park. You want to connect with history? Then this has got to be part of your agenda. You really enjoy going through oh. these places like that. Oh, yeah. You really had oh, a good yeah. time doing that. That was significant. Yeah, I, you know, when we think about what was happening on our end of slavery, we don't think about what was happening here. And I think it connects the dots for a lot of people to, you know, understand what was happening in a country where they were under a colonial rule. Yeah. Drop a comment below and let us know what you think. Well, number 14 is the W.B. Du Bois Center for Pan-African Culture. If you have done your historical reading, then you know how important W.B. was to, um, to the people here in Ghana. So taking the time to visit this spot should really be part of your diaspora and itinerary. Okay, okay. Let's wrap up this history <laughs> tour. I wanna to get some more hopping places. You would be at the hopping places all the time mm. if you could. Okay, so we covered adventure, we covered nature, we covered historical sites. Now we're on to the next few places, which are things you just have to visit and do when you come, like no matter what. And that brings us to? Number 15 is the beach. Uh, Ghana has a lot of oceanfront beaches waiting for you to explore them. The one you choose will depend on where you're staying. Uh, beaches like uh, Boho Beach, mm -hmm. um, oh, yeah. Labadi Beach, so. uh, Coco <laughs> Beach, all draw lots of traffic and offer loads of people watching. Yeah, they sure do. Um, <laughs> opportunities for swimming and horseback riding and, and just uh, 
Just uh, so much more yeah, you're sitting there. Just, I, I love the beaches. Just enjoying. And uh, you have to, have to stop at a beach when you come to Ghana. And just take time to be. You know, you can visit a resort if you want access to the bonus amenities. Mm -hmm. But you can also just stop anywhere along the coastline or the shore mm -hmm. and put some sand in those toes, y'all. Some spots have chop bars where you can grab something to eat or a drink vendor nearby. So you don't have to do a resort. You can just stop and... Um, yeah, the boys and I do that all the time. All, just go yeah. to the beach, yeah. find a spot, uh, buy a kebab stand. <laughs> and we are good. And there's so much shoreline to explore. I mean, mm -hmm. you gotta do it. Definitely a must. Next up, for a must during your visit to Ghana is number 16, Accra. Um, okay, so this could probably be a video <laughs> all by itself because there are loads of places to visit how in Greater we, Accra. How are we even gonna do this as just one number? Or just one number, yeah. Just You could spend days exploring just <laughs> yeah, city yeah. center. Just in, yeah, Jubilee House, uh, Black Star Square, yes. center, everything is so Old much. Sioux Street, oh. I mean, Oxford Street, Old Sioux. There are just so, so many places. Yeah, you, you, could, could, all, yeah, all. you could spend your entire trip yeah. just in Accra and have no problems because there's so much to see and do. Two million people live in Accra, so there's tons of options. Um, Makola Market, the National Museum, you said Black Star Square, mm. and then, of course, uh, the happening nightlife. Yeah, there's a party happening every night. And especially at Christmas time for <laughs> holiday. Um, wow, <laughs> that is a great time to plan a visit. Absolutely. Oh my gosh, like that. <laughs> you could come at Christmas time and never. <laughs> I won't want to leave. All right, so number 17 is the Art Center. There is pretty much an art center in all of the major cities, including in Accra, and Tamale, and Kumasi, and, and others. So keep yeah. that in mind, right? Yeah, you can see the craftsmen, like the kente weavers, carvers with the masks, mm -hmm. drums, and so much more. Yeah, the art center mm -hmm. here can be a little overwhelming because there's a lot going on. Yes, um, it's always busy. And it's always busy, but it's definitely worth the trip. You can see artists with paintings and sculptures, as well as designers with purses, and then weavers with baskets. And I mean, the list literally mm -hmm. goes on and yes. on. Wherever you're visiting, always ask if there's an arts or cultural center nearby and yes. what events are scheduled. Absolutely. Remember when we were in Tamale and they had the dancers? Oh, yeah. I and, mean, they, and they were like, hey, if we knew you were to come, we would have planned something big for you. I know. So, I mean, really, it's worth asking because you never know what you're going to discover mm -hmm. in these spots. All right. Number 18. You must eat Ghana. Yes. We are not <laughs> listing out a bunch of restaurants here. Uh, what we're telling you is that you should find a chop bar in Osu and Tema yes. or anywhere you happen to be and eat fresh seafood like tilapia. <laughs> try, try, try some goat kebab. Um, yes, I know we're say, making it sound like these things are so exotic. Go, go but... to uh, Tamale, have some um, guinea, guinea fowl. fowl. Oh, mm. You just have to figure out, really, if you are um, Team Fufu, Team Banku, or Team Kenke. Which one? Which one are you? Uh, nope. Don't answer that question. <laughs> there's definitely <laughs> you. There's definitely so much to taste. Chop bars and roadside places, um, you know, with some guidance, mm -hmm. are great. And you have to get some kelewele and some wache. That just has to be part Absolutely. of your Ghana trip. Yeah. So however you can get that done, <laughs> come eat Ghana. <laughs> All right, sorry, I'll stop talking about no, food. No, okay, food, I'm hungry. Number 19 is the market. Yep, if you are coming anywhere in, going anywhere in Ghana, then you have to visit a local market. Yes, Mancola Market is a large and vibrant marketplace in Accra, but you'll find the local market wherever you are. Mm -hmm. Take time to experience the sights and sounds and smells. I have seen some things at the market. <laughs> yeah, they, uh, they stick with you for a while, don't yeah, they? Yeah, I mean, but you know, it's it's just so different from going to your local, you know, mega yeah. supermarket and getting mm -hmm. everything there. Like just the or even a local farmer market. Yeah, it's just, it's just nothing like, like it. So you definitely should walk through the market. Mm -hmm. um, all right, finally, the last place on the list. And well, this is this is not a place so much as something you just need to know. Ghana is very near to the equator. And it's also on the Meridian Line. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? 
That means Ghana is the center of the world. <laughs> In particular, Tema, we day. Uh huh. The actual center is a short boat ride into the Gulf of Guinea, but it is within the boundaries of Ghana in specific, Tema. So you should keep that in mind. You get to come here and take your vacation and say that you are literally in the center of the world. I love that. Yes. <laughs> we hope this helps you plan your trip to Ghana and also sort out what areas you'll want to include in your itinerary. Absolutely. If you're interested in an exciting and worry-free travel experience, then consider booking with Expat Life Ghana. We take care of everything. All you have to do is get here. So, what are you waiting for? Get here already. <laughs> Hope to see you soon. Charlie out for now. <laughs> There's an outtake. Oh my gosh, that, that's a little frightening. Huh. You think they all know, like, we have, like, all this stuff. Oh. Ooh, I broke it. She broke it. Oh, oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> hey. <laughs> 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 Kids.